So I kind of wanted to redo this video because when I did it yesterday, I was half asleep and I didn't really explain the code like I wanted to. Um, and that too, I was kind of skimming through the code. So I want to demonstrate my code line by line and explain what this means because turns out my teacher really liked my code and, you know, I want to help other students out and explain where I got my code so that it might help them because this is a project that's not due for another two weeks or more than that, July 14th, it's the 25th today. Um, and um, I want to really make sure that I'm explaining this line by line and hopefully that helps other students out, you know. So here we have um, void setup. So what setup does, what void setup does is that it's a program that's a function that runs once and only once. Um, and it's not like um, other other things like mouse press where it executes once when that event is done. This one actually occurs once and just doesn't happen again. So this function size sets the size of the windows. So this is 1920 by 1080. And what I'll explain later in the video is that I have my code set up such that um, such that um, the um, window, which I should show you, um, can be chain change in size and you can still have all of the things that are properly set up. So if this wants to run, there we go. So let me make sure that um, it's centered in OBS. So here you can see that um, there's a uh, like um lines going there everything you see in here is generated in there as you can see that there's some um grid in the front which is done in a while loop a nested while loop and it's a gradient and some text and stuff everything you see here was done entirely in code um so the interesting thing is that um if i go to processing and if I change this to say 1300 to 800 by 800 um, you can see that this shrinks down the actual size of the of the mountains as well and the grid in the bottom too is also proportionally scaled um, so it's as if I'm scaling an image down except for the aesthetic which I intentionally left not um, intentionally left not proportional to the image um, so now here it's bigger text as proportioned on the screen um, the sun also is not proportional um, and the foreground um, static, not the static, the, um, the grid static is also not um, proportional. <coughs> this te line of text is actually unnecessary, but for your purposes of um, code, you want to put your background there unless you're changing the background. That means that the background is being drawn once and isn't wiping the rest of the background every time if you're putting it in void draw. Um, the rest of my code is actually in void draw. This is a, itself a looping function which allows it to go execute this code over and over again and it's very useful for um, creating animations. So, as my um, little comments show, um, this section draws the gradient backgrounds. If you saw it went from blue from um, blue to magenta, and then from a greenish blue down to a blackish uh, blackish blue. Um, 
to draw the sky and the and things. So there's actually no way to draw a gradient in um, processing. But what I ended up doing was that I used a while loop to draw various rectangles of changing color and I just had the width of the rectangles really really low so that it appears that in by the steps it's changing really slowly and it appears to be a gradient. So I have um, five variables here. Um, YBG which is the Y position of the background rectangle so that it, it's flush against the um, left side of the the window um, in order to create the <coughs> in order to create the um, rectangle from across the screen. Then there's three channels background red, background green and background blue. Um, and this is so that I can individually manipulate the color channels and put them and into the uh, and manipulate them numerically um, so that you know they're rare bills so I can vary them. Um, rect H is a, just the rectangle height, and this isn't wasn't entirely necessary. But for instance, if I change this to fifty, um, you can see that the, there's far fewer steps in the background, and the background static basically disappears because later in the code I actually created um, a variance on the stroke of this that creates the effect of static which was actually an accident the first time I did it, but it ended up being an effect that I actually really liked and was trying to go for in a different way, so I kept it. Um, this is even more obvious if I put it at, say, 200. Um, and as you can see, now there's only two little sections there. Um, but I want to keep this at 5 because that's what I found gives the best effect. So in the, the initial blue condition is um, at 255, so it's completely blue, and the rest are, like, not blue. They're not, they don't have any color. So, the, so when I put these RGB commands in there, it's just blue. Um, here's the first boy loop, and that draws the sky because I can't draw a 3 unit gradient because that makes it a little, that that wouldn't be possible in just one while loop as far as I know at least. Um, in this I set the um, Y background to be less than the height divided by two so that it draws it on the, only the top half of the image. So while the Y background height is less than what the Y background position is less than half of the screen do this whatever's in here. So when and here I have an addition command that makes it add the rectangle height to it. So every time it's repeating this, it moves the position of the rectangle down and draws another one, and then does it again, and then draws another one, and draws it again, and then draws another one. So it does this until it reaches the half the height. And notice that it's not less than or equal to because if it was less than or equal to, it would draw one more rectangle below that. However, in the other section, it is less than or equal to so that it does draw it right below that. But here, I set the stroke weight to 1 so that it creates that stroke around the, um, around the rectangle. If you don't want any stroke around your image, you would use n the command no stroke, parentheses, close parentheses. Um, that one will allow it to be no stroke. And but I want the stroke here because I can randomize the stroke by um, um, I think I do that later on actually um, but I know what I do actually I randomize the stroke color that's what I did I didn't randomize the stroke weight so I randomize the stroke color um, and uh, the stroke color uh, is what randomizes so it it becomes any shade of red blue or purple notice that there's no green channel because what I was using the gradient itself was going from a um, reddish um, blue 
a reddish color to a purple to a bluish color the, the pink the magenta is the, the bluish color to the magenta -ish color and both of them have a red in, the magenta has a red channel in there and has no green in there because there's no green channel in what's, what's in the sky so that allows it to appear as so the sky is shimmering and flickering um, in static so the fill um, is the important line here <coughs> that allows the um, that allows the the color channel to change so notice that they're not that they're not um, numbers themselves they're variables so I nest I didn't necessarily need BGG here I didn't need the background green here but I put it in there for um, just for posteriority I guess um, in this particular line um, and here's the actual rectangle drawn so every time this moves down then I want this to add a certain amount to the background red channel so that it becomes more and more magenta and what I found is that this particular value which is kind of arbitrary and kind of not this particular value actually allows it to um, complete the cycle um, even if there's um, very few rectangles. I don't know how it does that because if there's fewer rectangles there shouldn't be it shouldn't cycle as fast but this is what I actually find creates the best gradient even if there's a really low number of rectangles or even if there's a really high number of rectangles because obviously if it's a high number of rectangles then it's going to the gradient's going to go to blue a lot sooner but this actually um, oh wait that's why it's a function of the rectangle height because um, that because um, that way it's not going to go to blue sooner because it's a function of the rectangle height um, so that I can put more rectangles on there um, and it just divide it by the rect it just be two thirds of the um, rectangle height um, added to that to the red value. Um, so here, and that draws the thing. So here, I just wanted to add some line static in the sky. So I don't know if you could see it, but um, so because it's hidden by the grid in the front, because I wanted it to, um, I wanted it to appear before I had the idea of the grid static. Um, so. There's like a bunch of random static lines, vertical static lines in the background, and that's what this does. So I could have done a while loop here, but I didn't because I didn't really understand how to do this particular while loop, um, this particular thing in a while loop. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll figure it out eventually, but I think that it was more a case of... Um, you know, not knowing how to put an integer in. And now I know how to do that, <clears throat> how to use random in integer. And all it is just putting um, a an int parentheses around the random, putting that as an argument for the in int function, the, the int um, command, um, so that it, um, it's not a function, the command, um, so that it can be used in INT. Um, so here, if I had just put um, plus INT random, um, then it would have actually worked and I didn't have to add this. So if I actually replace all of these with um, with something like that, then if I'm not mistaken, this code should still run. Yeah. So, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I hit Control Z one too many times. Okay, there we go. 
Um, so, um, yeah, this can all be replaced with the I and T random, or I can have a function, or another thing that's, um, I and T random, um, and have it call that, um, and then put that, their lines plus that value, but I didn't do that. And I could have also done this as a while function as well, um, as I said, and I could have invested that in there, but maybe if I decide to improve this code someday, I'll do that. Um, um, but here, that just generates the, the static, by the way. So if you can see, there's a lot of <coughs> random white flecks on the screen. Um, wait, that's not for that. The, the, the lines on the screen, it's, the, it's, it's for the lines on the screen. The static is in a different section. Um, so it generates the background lines. The, um, so here, um, here's the, where it draws the ground. Um, and um, so essentially I set the background channel for red back to zero so that um, it isn't um, drawing from a magenta color. So this is drawn on top of the lines because this basically draws it on top on new layers on everything above the um, the previous things. So that's why the order of what's in my um, code is extremely important because if it's in any other order then things would be drawn on top of each other that shouldn't be drawn on top of each other. Um, so here um, the background colors of red is set back to zero and this draws the ground or rather the bottom half of the um, window. So this is the exact same code as the other one but the only thing that's different is that as I said this one starts that the, the equaling the height um, less than this one's less than or equal to the height um, and going all the way up to um, it goes all the way up to um, down from so the, the position of the rectangle is already at the um, oh wait as a matter of fact I don't I don't even need this equal to do because this would be drawing it one below the actual height of the window um, so this one's the the position of YBG is already at the um, equal to position of the height over two. So YBG is already at height over two, um, and it's drawing all the way down to the bottom of the of the window. So the height. So this actually doesn't even need to be equals to, um, but it doesn't hurt to have it there. So this is all the same code except for the stroke. Um, the the um, the, um, the fill color. Um, so here, I have it such that it's just the slightest um, that the the greenish color is is just slightly green color because I wanted it to be slightly greenish. I could have just put um, and I wanted the green to kind of um, fade out. Um, and the blue color is still fully intense and I wanted that to um, go down to a black. So here, um, same YBG plus rectangle height as usual. And also here, it's um, the background blue color um, is less than the rectangle height. Um, that honestly, that should have been, I guess I didn't add that there, that actually should be something similar to that. But um, because it's going to black, it doesn't really matter as much because the whole ground should have been anyways darker. Where are you? There. Um, and the background green color is subtracting one from each rectangle so that it's slowly fading out to green, I mean a, a black, instead of a greenish black. Um, I wanted it the, at the top to be a more cyanish color because the ground is cyan, um, so that it looks as if that at the top 
there's more lines there in the the thing. So this one is actually a fairly simple one. It destroys the mountains. But it has some complex arguments because I wanted to have it such that it um depending on the peaks of the mountains and the corners of the mountains um adjust with proportion proportionally to the actual window itself. That way if you make it bigger you're not gonna see the ends of the mountain. Um otherwise you would or if you make it smaller some of it'll get cropped out. Um I didn't want that to happen. Um and um, so here uh, I picked a color um, that's essentially, um, I used a color picker and I picked the RGB color out of that that I liked. Um, and I essentially made it very slightly so that it appears to flicker. Um, I have the stroke weight set to um, the stroke weight set to um, five, um, so that it the background of the mountain appears as if the sun is lighting it from the back, um, and that's slightly um, that so that the stroke is slightly um, so that the stroke is slightly um, brighter than the actual fill of that. Um, so the fill um, is just a this is proportionally darker than the other one um, approximately so that this is still that similar thing and this all this um, also flickers um, and so it appears the mountain is kind of flickering like in a CRT static image um, but the actual triangles themselves that um, are, are a more complex case these are actually somewhat, somewhat arbitrary, and the, and then I changed essentially things like here. They're the same triangle, but they are just mirrored. Like there's code to mirror the image. Um, so instead of width, it's width minus width minus seven, um, width over seven, so that it it, it it's um, on the reflected side of the um, window. Um, and um, I'm not going to go over each and every one of these, but essentially the little ones uh, are made in such a way that it would scale with the window. Um, and um, here, uh, the um, this one is what adds the static. Again, I could have done a while loop here. But um, I honestly should have uh, done this in a while loop, but I didn't. I don't know why, but I guess I was too lazy to do it in a while loop, which is weird because this project was not lazy for what I had to do for the project, I guess. Um, I guess I was lazier than what I could have done with um, my skill set. But, um, so I said, oops, scroll with my touch screen. Okay, so this just generates a random point with the randomish stroke that's, um, sl that's mostly whitish. Um, just a random rainbowish, rainbowish white. Um, so that it, um, with a different stroke, so that it appears as if it's just a staticky, um, artifact on the screen. Um, so these all um, are just random points and there's more that are concentrated at the top of the screen, more points that are concentrated at the top of the screen so that it can do that. So I definitely could have done this in a while loop, but I didn't. Um, um, So, uh, here, um, this creates the overlay grid because I didn't want certain, some of the, the, um, parts of the image to be in the foreground 
or be in the uh, be in the background. Um, I wanted to like certain images to be in the background and certain images to be in the foreground. So that's why this is um, sta sandwiched between the sun, the grid, and the word aesthetic. Um, so the um, there's an, a variable for the red grid, and then there's this will be the exact same code for the um, blue grid and the green grid, um, just with the variables with the name change, and this particular value is going to change just because so that they're not overlaid on top of each other exactly. So here, I also put an offset so that it generates a slight change to the thing so that it appears to jitter. So that it's, um, again, it's not static on the screen because otherwise that would be boring and it's like a dynamic image. I want it to be jittering a little bit so that it's not static. Um, So um, here, um, this is um, again constraining it the wild things to being less than the width and less than the height. And if you're not careful, and if you don't concern it to a point where it can eventually cut off, um, the while loop will continuously be processing, and the um, and the draw command will never refresh because it'll be stuck over here. And this that would be a bug because that's it's stuck in the while loop and it that it just doesn't exi exit it. And therefore the draw the one iteration of the draw command never completes. So you want to be very, very careful that you're constraining your while loops properly, otherwise you're gonna get that as a bug and it'll be excuse me. Um it'll be stuck in the while loop. So this generates um, a slightly, it generates either a, a one or a two for a stroke um, so that it appears to sort of change as well. Um, and this also uh, changes uh, the color. Why did I put it as a uh, I don't know why I have it as magenta. This sh this shouldn't be magenta. Oh, that's al alpha. Sorry, that's the alpha transparency. Um, so that so this is the tra so you've probably learned that you had to have you can have three arguments in here, but you can actually have four to like the fill and the stroke, and that's the alpha transparency. Um, so I this essentially sets the alpha to between ninety percent to a hundred percent, so that it appears to be changing in intensity. Because even though it's just one pixel, you won't really see what's in the background um, coming through it. Um, there's a lot of the values like the sun that I use the alpha in, and in the um, in the glow and the glow for the um, for the the ground grid, um, that I also use alpha transparency in so to create a more interesting effect. Um, so this essentially creates a line that's um, proportional to the um, the red grid's x and the red grid's um, that goes from you know, the position of the x grid to the um, position of the um, grid in the bottom so that it's a straight line. Um, and so this creates, um, and then I said it's just that the x grid is the, the offset plus 50 so that it changes it changes it. But the thing is, is that if you look closely, I'm going to run it again, um, if you look closely, it changes less close to the um, Close to the um, this side of the screen than it does on uh, on the left side of the screen than it does on the right side of the screen. That's because the effect is compounding on this side of the screen, so you don't see much on the other side of the screen. And I actually don't know how to have the whole grid appear to shake evenly. So if you know how to do that, please tell me because I don't know how to do that.
And then once it ends, so this is a compounded while loop. So that that way it draws the grid all across the screen. Um, and here, um, once it exits the inner while loop, it it goes to the outer while loop and draws um, an outer while loop for the um, the y axis the, for the y axis. Um, the the um, these are for the uh, the horizontal ones, and these are for the vertical ones. Um, I think, yeah. Um, so it does the exact same thing. Um, it jitters them so that they're proportionally jittered. Um, the I'm not going to explain the green one because it's exactly the same thing except I changed the variable to extra green and also I changed it to 60 so that's the same thing and the exact same thing with the blue um, but 55 um, so here's the ground grid um, here I have the stroke weight uh, set to 5 um, because um, I didn't want this particular one to jitter because usually in synthwave um, imagery the ground grid is pretty stationary um, so I have the stroke set to cyan um, I have um, an upper line variable and a bottom line variable that way I can um, that way I could uh, create the actual um, things appearing, the grid um, appearing to um, do that, I'd, to uh, go from left to right while expanding its the bottom one while not expanding the top. Um, that way it's even and I didn't have to do it manually because that would be a pain in the butt. Um, I didn't do this nested because I didn't know how to do this in a nested while loop um, while creating the offset um, so that it looks as if it's a perspective grid. Um, and I wasn't sure how to do it so that it looked like a perspective grid. <sighs> so um, here it just um, says um, this is width over 12, this is width two-thirds of the, negative two-thirds of the width, the position over there. So this is just the position, the initial positions of the, um, these variables. So this is for the, um, the one that, um, goes weirdly. And I just had to play around with this until, until the, the coefficients, um, because, um, I didn't know how to uh, get this so that it is exactly centered. So if you tell me if you can tell me how to actually get this so that it looks really centered, um, that'd be great because currently it doesn't look perfectly centered. Um, if you see here, I'll run it again. Um, it appears to be just the slightest bit off center, and I don't know how to get that so that it actually looks perfectly centered. Is this properly an OBS window? It's, it's close enough. Um, I don't know how to get this so it's exactly centered. Um, so these are actually just kind of arbitrary, but as you can see, one of them adds more than it does to the other, so it appears to be as if it's fanning out. Um, and eventually the negative value um, being added more than the top, the, that's going to overtake the um, positive value and um, start going the other direction, which is how it appears to flip direction. Um, the horizontal one is a lot more simple. It literally um, just um, does it uh, adds the um, the. Um, one position to it and then it increases the amount that um, it 
it just it adds the value that the offset value and then it increases the offset value and it does this until it reaches the bottom of the image so it starts at the at the um the horizontal position um and then it does that so everything you see down here is again it's in the foreground of the grid so there's nothing so this one um this grid is in front of the static grid and this one um honestly this should have been below the um uh, or i should say in the code above the uh the actual grid stuff but this one is just creates a glow so honestly i should have done my stroke weight as a random um like thing between 15 and 20 so that it um so that it appears to jitter as well so now the ground grid ap ap appears to flicker as well so um that creates uh, let me make that 17 and 20 that's a too intense of a flicker um yeah that's much better so now the ground grid itself it appears to um flicker i mean i could have added it i didn't have to add it but it's just an extra, an added layer of detail, you know? Um, and I like that added layer of detail. So, the uh, that essentially just adds the glow to it. And the code is identical to the other code. So that generates the same thing. The only difference here was just the um, stroke color. And the, uh, which was just the alpha channel was added to create a, a transparency between 50 to 80 percent um to um that's what was the randomization of it but it wasn't really intense enough that's why i, I wanted to add the um the randomization of um the stroke as well um so again this is the same code um so this section adds the horizon glow that you see in synthwave. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go Google synthwave and look at all of the images on Google. Um, it adds a horizon. They all have a sort of horizon glow to it. So essentially, um, the uh, this just adds rectangles of various um of various um transparencies and and widths um and they're just this is just the basic uh it's at half the height and it's at a different position so this is actually pretty straightforward code um and th and um yeah so the, this still has a, a stroke to it i don't necessarily I, nece I don't necessarily need a stroke there as a matter of fact, no stroke would have been better, but I kept it there anyways. Um, but see how I have the transparency set to one? Here it would be better just for me to put no stroke. Um, but I didn't know that was the command when I typed this particular thing. Um, here as the sun, so the stroke weight is actually set to 50 here to create the, um, a, the illusion that there's like a toroidal um, thing around it, a, a ring around it too, as if that's the glow of the sun to flicker. So the stroke actually flickers um, and it generates a transparency that actually goes from being completely transparent to completely solid. Um, and um, so this is just some shade of orange dark or like a darkish orange not a yellowish orange or a reddish orange it's just orange it's that the code for orange is actually 255 or 128 or 127 rather um that's just your standard orange uh middle way between um red and yellow um so it's approximately in that range um but it gets it to be a little bit more yellowish or a little bit more reddish, depending on these values. Um, so the fill is actually 
a yellowish color and it flickers from being slightly more oranges to slightly more yellowish or um, slightly more greenish rather I should say but it's really more yellowish um, because this doesn't get dark enough to show up as um, yellow um, as green I mean um, and the this thing oh I did actually have the sun defined to be uh, proportional to the height um, of the of the width and height of the image um, but um, so this one um, it's just is proportional that's all it is it's just saying that it's proportional and this says that, oh it's a little bit above the horizon um, and this is actually the last section of the code and this one adds the text and an RGB offset glow so that it appears because the thing is, is that I originally wanted it to have um, a blocky font um, and I didn't I didn't put the blocky font in there because if I submitted this um, then the font file wouldn't be in there but what the teacher told me is that effectively I can have the um, I can have the file embedded in the file in the zipped file that processing can generate um, so that I don't have to worry about um, if this code is executed on somebody else's computer the the true type file would be actually there um, and I wouldn't have to worry about um, it trying it giving an error because it can't execute the code um, so here um, um this just um generates the text aesthetic and it positions it and I had to center it. I had to align it to center and I put the text size as a hundred. Really I should have made this proportional to the image, but um I intentionally didn't want to so that it appears something different because you're not gonna make this so small that it's not usable, right? I guess if I wanted to create a an icon or something, I could have. I can change this to. I can change that to different things. But honestly, if I was creating an icon, I would just comment all of this out, because that wouldn't display on the image anyways. Um, it'd be cool for me to make a GIF out of this, though. <laughs> um, so. This aligns this to the perfect center of the image, of the text, um, and what these two things mean is that this centers it along the middle of that, um, on the x-axis, and this centers it along the y-axis, so that um, it's perfectly centered in on the thing and not just in the bottom center, what usually is aligned for text. Um, so. Here, um, the this is the same code for um, all of the of all of the different RGB ones that are offset slightly. Um, that they kind of flicker because I wanted it to. I wanted it to flicker in different ways, so. Um, what well, this should be fifty five. Whoops. Oh wait. Yeah, that should be 55, actually. I don't know why that's not um, a typo. That's a typo. <laughs> um, so, um, this one generates the... Um, this one all generate the um, red, green, blue, and a, and a magenta color um, that are the slightest bit offset, and it just fills it in different colors. Um, so these are just offset from the main one, which is on top intentionally, uh, and that one is, uh, that one is the white text that overlays on top of everything, um, so that this one doesn't do that. Uh, and as you can see, it's just in the center. So that's essentially my code that generates this so 
I'm going to put this uh, at 1920. Okay, 1080. And I'm just going to run it. And you guys can enjoy this for like a minute. Okay, I guess that was enough enjoying it. This is art. Are you here at the buzzer? Stare at the art. Good. You should now feel mentally reinvigorated. If you get the reference, then you're a friend. But, yes. That's, uh, essentially my code, and I hope that my exploration of the code was helpful to you. Um, I'm probably going to make more videos of me making projects and posting the code because it'll be interesting. Sorry for the staticky sound, like I'm recording this on a Surface Pro, so it doesn't have the best microphone. I'm sorry. But yeah, have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Bye.